Hey guys, hope you're all well. So today's discussion is going to be about a human being's response to ChatGPT and AI as a whole. Recently, more famous in this trend of AI is the aroma of fear that I see around a lot of developers, a lot of software engineers and a lot of students. A lot of students and a lot of software engineers are saying that AI is going to make us completely irrelevant. AI is going to take away our role. AI is going to ruin our market. Companies are going to uh, invest more into AI. They're going to leave us alone. They're not going to hire us anymore. I don't particularly believe that, guys. I'm not convinced. I graduated with a first class degree in 2019 from the University of Bedfordshire. I'm currently doing my master's at Queen Mary's University of London. And I did Infosys for three years after I graduated. And then I worked for a company called NIM as a business development associate. A chance to work with some of the best minds around the world. So, guys, I want to bring your attention to something. You know, all of us have cars on the road here. We all have cars. Now, what happens if you're, you hit your car into another car? An insurance claim, right? Or you have some sort of um, uh, loss, right? Now, the only reason I, if I'm honest with you, I feel safe on the road is because I know a loss. There will be some sort of accountability on the other driver that hits into me if I am driving. Now, that's for a human being. Human beings have accountability. Robots and AI don't have accountability. You are not going to say to an AI, you have to sit out for five minutes if you get this wrong. Or you have to, um, I don't know, I'm going to turn you off if you do this. It doesn't matter because you've created it yourself. It doesn't work like a human being works. A human being understands punishments and reward. Now, people buy from people in the world of business. You could find a hundred law firms in your area, but what's ultimately going to decide who you go with is going to be the relationship that you have in your mind with them in terms of who do you like, who do you get on with, who have you got a better social bond with? Who do you know is reliable? Who do you know is trustworthy? Who do you know is character is good? And who do you know will give you the best price? Correct. That's why we go for people in business. A lot of CEOs may use ChatGPT and may use AI to solve those tasks that just take them time to finish. Like for example, I will not use it for assignments because that would go against my previous video. What I would do it for, I, what I would do is I would do it to get ideas on how to solve the assignments. So for example, I had an assignment two weeks ago on data, data analytics. And what I did was, I'll put into ChatGPT, give me 10 ideas of how I can uh, solve this problem. And it gave me 10 ideas and I picked one. That's not called cheating, that's just called being resourceful. From what I see, the decision maker here is the human being. Let me give you guys a quote to help you guys understand what I'm saying. So I, I read a lot of books on war. So what they say is that a sheep running an army of lions will have all the lions dying as sheep. But a lion running an army of sheep will have all the sheep fighting as lions. Why? Because the ultimate decision maker is the lion there. And so they're all inside this bubble wrap of the, of, of the lion. And so whatever the lion decides, they will do. And so they will all win because they're working by the lion. Now, a human being is a natural leader. Because he has to be a leader. It's part of the, his survival instinct. AI is there to help you. AI is there to support you. AI is there to assist you. It is not there to replace you. If you feel like AI is replacing you, it just means that either you're not doing a good enough job, or let's just say world circumstances, which is something that I can't really speak on, or you need to upskill yourself. For example, I tell my students a lot of the time that if you're, if you're writing some code, if you're writing a piece of code, that code will be used more than once in your program. Try your best to build a method out of it and then re just reuse that method because it saves time. It's uh, the code is then reusable and what you call it, it makes your life easier and there's less runtime. It's the same in real life. How I mean that is, for example, let's say you're running a company, yeah? I use a certain tool to automate my posts on, let's say, LinkedIn and all the social medias I have. But I've still got a human being putting those posts on. It just means that's just, they're just doing it at once and not at other times. So I've, got, I've still got a human being who thinks, who decides, who does all this stuff to do the research and decide what time he's going to put the post on. Just because I can automate the process doesn't mean that sort of like makes him lose his quality of him, him doing his job. He still has to choose a set of research at the best times that the social medias have to put posts on go onto the platform and put the posts on. There is still some sort of effort required, some sort of consistent effort required to become successful at that. Do not think that AI is there to replace you, it is not. In fact, it's there to help you and to assist you. Cars don't replace human beings. Cars assist human beings. All the rest of the AIs that you see in the world, they're there to help and assist. If your job is so easy that an AI can do it, maybe you should upskill. I'm not saying all jobs are like that. Some people might just be like, use it for maybe someone's mad bad at making business decisions and they just might let's say to you, we don't need you anymore and use AI. Another point I'd like to make to all of you guys is not just accountability, but also risk versus reward. We buy from people, right? Back onto that point. We buy from people, why? Because we see more reward in dealing with those who we already have a relationship with before dealing with. A lot of billionaires would say this, that the more decisions you make in a day, the more your decision to make ability goes low for that day. This is why people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates and whoever they are make, make uh, wear the same t-shirt every day. 
They might have like six, seven different t-shirts, but the fact of the matter is they go to the room, they can use different t-shirts. A lot of businessmen just don't have time. They don't have time. So who's going to sit there and use chat GPT for every single one of his business decisions? They'd rather have somebody working it for them. So for example, uh, let's say someone says to me, Sharon, we need you to make a website for us. Rather than employing chat GPT to do it for you, you'd have to employ somebody who will go through chat GPT, research the best way forward and then try it out. Because trial and error, a robot won't be able to do for you. Well, it might be able to. The best at it is a human being because the best at making decisions is a human being. Chat GPT sometimes loses the complete uh, plot when I ask you a question. It might, I, I might ask you a question to do with X and it might give me a response to do with Y. It doesn't make sense to me. I might ask you, I don't know, what are the best programming languages to use right now? It might give me a response based on some data that it finds on the internet, the internet that doesn't even make sense. That's possible because it's an AI. It's just doing what you give to it. AIs don't work with subjectivity. AIs work, work objectively and AIs work with what, the, what it's been taught to do. Guys, if people want to buy from robots, they can. If they want to put their stuff in the trust of robots, they can. But personally, I wouldn't. I'd rather go to a human being who knows how to operate the thing and use it rather than using it myself for stuff that I may not know how to do. I understand how cars for one entire district used to be operated by one person once upon a time. But that car is still run by a human being, right? The ultimate decision maker is a human being. And at the end of the day, that's the one that's the one quality human beings have that a device or an AI will never be able to have. A decision making ability based upon risk and reward and based upon subjects and circumstances because human beings can adapt to circumstances changing all the time. That's one thing that we have been given because of our survival instincts. We know how to survive. We know how to survive or we're supposed to know how to survive. But these robots, they just do what they're told. That's it. Remember that they do what they're told, we do, we do what we want. We are supposed to do what we want, they are supposed to do what they're told. There's a difference between the way we're built. So guys, there's no need to fear. Robots are not going to replace us. Just upscale yourself. Just learn more. Just just do more. Fear, put that away. Stress, put that away. Hold your head upright and walk, walk, with, walk with pride and happiness. No one's going to take your job. And secondly, guys, I just thought I'd let you know a small advertisement. Please don't drop off at this, this point. So Coden Chamber has made the decision now to change all our courses to a subscription model of £25 a month. All of our courses are currently at £25 a month. You can go to the website, which I will uh, enclose below in the description and you guys can go to the website you guys can sign up and you guys have a seven day money back guarantee so anybody that goes on my courses and doesn't like it on the sixth day you can get a refund back and you can take your money back and we won't ask you why we will ask you if we could have done better except that we won't ask you anything guys 24.99 a month i currently have a front-end development course there i've got a crude application course there that goes through requirements all the way to testing obviously i'm, up I'm uploading these videos weekly and i'm going through a certain way of doing it which is beneficial to, to my students. The front-end development course is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, ReactJS, and one capstone project. And guys, I have a Java course. The Java course has been my most successful course to date. Everyone that has used the Java course has very, very much benefited. As you can see in my Google reviews, the Java course is five to 10 minute lessons, 10 videos, and you can upscale yourself in Java with that. And if you guys want to generally upscale, I'll have more courses coming. I'll have a Python course coming, a C Sharp course coming, a backend development course coming. I'll have more and more courses coming as my students come in and demand more things. And next week or the week after, we also have a CV workshop. I'll also enclose a link of that below in the description. If you guys want to come to that, it's free, totally free. You can come to that as well and see another thing or two about how, how to fix your CVs. Yeah, guys. So if you found this video helpful, like, share and subscribe. Hopefully we'll make more videos on these topics. And uh, yeah. Please let me know what else, how else I can support you students in your growth at university. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week, guys. Thank you. And please like, share and subscribe.